Hi, it's Pastor Paul Anderson at the Fountain of Raleigh Fellowship, where we believe God's blessings never stop flowing. It is terrific to see. It's the time in which you and I can pause and say, God, I thank you for being such a terrific and an awesome God. And all the things that have happened in my life and around me, I know that you have an ultimate plan that I just haven't seen the end results yet. But I'm waiting because my faith is in you. Today, I want to remind you, it's also African American History Month. And we want to pause to recognize another great inventor and one who made a great discovery. Today, we want to talk about Osborne Dorsey. Osborne Dorsey in 1878 invented the doorknob and the doorstop. Osborne Dorsey created the doorknob and the doorstop. Can you believe what life was like before we had the doorknobs and the doorstops? I don't know about you. Every day I cannot think about all the times I've touched the doorknob. You know, a doorknob will open a door. You can use it to close the door. A doorstop is what you use to keep the door positioned in one spot and it doesn't move. Thank God for him. I don't know about you, but I appreciate doorknobs and doorstops. It reminds me of faith in God. God will open doors for you that no one can open. He will close doors to keep things out or to keep things in that need to be there. He will stop doors. Things where he says enough is enough and let us stay right where it is. Pause and take a break. Today, I hope on this terrific Tuesday, you'll know that God is doing awesome and great things in your lives. Look with me at 1 Timothy, the third chapter, verses 14 through 16, where we find this letter that is written to Timothy through and by the Apostle Paul. He talks about the truths of our faith, the truths of our faith. The first thing he says that I'm writing this letter because I hope to see you. Now, notice Paul had this wonderful mentoring relationship with Timothy and reminds all of us who have been in the faith for any period of time that we have had a proven track record of trusting God and God doing awesome demonstrations in our lives. We should become mentors of those young persons in the faith, those who have just become new to the faith, who might not be young chronologically, but are young in the faith. He lets us see, first of all, that Paul looks forward and has hope of seeing Timothy. Because of this endeared relationship, he knew it was important for them to periodically get together and to talk about life and his calling and what God had in store for him. Remember, Timothy was like a son to Paul. Timothy was the one that Paul was pouring into him all that he had because he needed someone else to carry the message. So the text says and helps us to understand. Firstly, he says, I hope to see you. Secondly, says, if I delay, let everybody know that I'm coming and I'm coming to see all of those who are part of the household of faith. You see, when Paul was on his way to visit Timothy, he knew that while he was on his way there, he will see others and he might be delayed. But he wanted everybody to know delay does not mean denial. Oftentimes in our world, when we think something is delayed, we think we've been denied. But no, all it means is that delay doesn't mean, delay doesn't mean denial. It means that God is on the way and he's going to make it happen. Paul is letting Timothy know, tell all the believers, those who are part of the household of faith, that I am on the way and be ready for me when I get there. Paul was eager to see Timothy. He was eager to see the other believers, but he also knew and understood that he had a work where he was at that moment. And all of our lives, we cannot be so busy and looking so forward to next that we forget about where we are right now. Someone says today is called the present because it is a gift. When you and I understand today is the present, it's the gift that God has given to us. So let's work within the present moments that we're in. While we're in the present, let's make sure that we love and that we give careful concern and direction to those that are around us that we're mentoring and those that have been mentoring us. We must do that. Thirdly, he talks about this is for the church of the living God to let them all know that the pillar of our faith is in the foundation of the words of Jesus. All of us must understand that we must live life based upon the foundational truths, the pillars, the things that hold up what we believe is what Jesus said and what God revealed through him by his word. It wasn't man-made doctrine. It wasn't philosophy. It wasn't our religious behaviors, but it's based upon the truth. It wasn't based upon a building, but it's based upon those of us who are the believers. We are found out during the season of COVID-19 that the church is the group of believers wherever they are. It's not a building. Oh, they used to call the place where the church met the meeting house because it was the place where the church met. It wasn't the church where the people met. 
Uh, oftentimes we get the two twisted and we must make sure that we get it right. And then lastly, he'll, he helps us to see and to understand uh, that I'm coming to you without question that I might show to you the great mysteries and the faith that God has given to us. Paul lets them know, lastly, when I get there, I'm going to show you the great mysteries. Oftentimes we forget that there are some mysterious things that are in God's word, but they're hidden for those who would diligently search to find them. God has some great mysteries in his word that only those who seek and search diligently will find them. I don't know about you, but somebody said tomorrow might be a mystery. And today we have the present, which is the gift of God. So make sure that you know what God has done for you and understand that God loves you. God cares for you because he has the truth that's in his word. I look forward to seeing you on tomorrow. God bless you. To sow a seed to the Fountain of Raleigh Fellowship, visit our newly redesigned website, thefountainofraleigh.org and select Sow a Seed from the homepage. Also, giving has been made easier with the new Fountain of Raleigh app available now in the Apple App Store and Google Play Store. Download today, select giving from the main menu, and then follow the directions to complete your giving through Subsplash. Thank you so very much for all of your gifts and donations that you've given to the Fountain of Raleigh Fellowship. We thank you for what you've done in the past, what you're currently doing, and what you will do in the future. Your gifts and donations helps us to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ, not only locally, but throughout the world. Thank you again for your gifts, and may God continue to richly bless you. It is here at the Fountain that we believe that we are exceedingly and abundantly blessed, and may you receive those blessings that God has in store for you. Okay.